It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's Nightly News Roundup. I'm Roland Boyden, and this is 5.45 Live, taking a look at what's coming up on deck tonight. Uh, we'll talk about the gubernatorial debates. Got some footage courtesy of uh, VPR there. There's some new marijuana dispensaries going in in town, uh, and we've got plenty of things to talk about with VY on today's show, including uh, a new lawsuit, all that and more. We do it in 15 minutes some way, somehow. We might even be able to get you out in just a little bit less time to go and enjoy that weekend, all that and more. So stick with us. I started sailing in 1967. I was in Stowe, Vermont. It happened that the head of Stowe Prep this gentleman, a professor, came that morning before we got out of the house and said, who wants to go sailing? We played with that boat all day. I ran into trees, ran into sandbanks. But I was thoroughly hooked. Welcome back to this September 14th, 2012 edition of 545 Live. I'm Roland Boyden. I'll be taking you through the next 15 minutes into the world news. That's Morgan Freeman, uh, who today made headlines above uh, all else, including the tragedies in Libya, uh, by dying. Or so said social media. Turns out Morgan is just a, another victim of uh, the death hoax phenomenon, joining the likes of Bill Cosby and Eddie Murphy, uh, whose so-called deaths have uh, permeated the social media stratosphere uh, that's Freeman talking about uh, his love of sailing, which uh, apparently was fostered in Stowe, Vermont. Hard to believe that our little landlocked state could get anybody into sailing, but that is the case. All right, uh, we'll uh, move on here and start with our Reformer Roundup, where we sum up all, all the latest happenings in uh, Brattleboro's daily newspaper here. All right, let's start it off, make sure everybody knows what we're talking about here by putting that big uh, Reformer Roundup graphic in. All right. Let's start it up. Frank Caraballo, who's been uh, sentenced to 16 years in prison for distributing crack cocaine, uh, he's by the feds. In addition, he's uh, facing a murder rap. Uh, that's a charge in connection to the 2011 shooting of Melissa Barrett. If he's convicted, he could spend the rest of his life in prison. And on to Entergy, which is now suing Vermont. And I've got a graphic for that as well. Yep. Suing Vermont uh, Yankee, uh, claiming that the new tax they're putting in is inconstitutional, unconstitutional. Uh, Entergy claims that the tax, which increases its obligation to the state from $5 million to an estimated $12.8 million, uh, is an attempt by the state to blackmail Entergy into shutting the plant down in the wake of its 20-year extension from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. And to close with our uh, last slide here, Last week, we reported that Bellows Falls attorney Christopher Moore could find himself on the ballot with a GOP next to his name, even after losing the Democratic primary. And although Moore did receive enough write-in votes to become the GOP's candidate for the seat, he has declined the nomination for the Vermont House of Representatives. Moore unsuccessfully ran for the House as an independent in 2010 and lost the Democratic nomination to incumbents Carolyn Partridge uh, and Matthew Triber. That's our Reformer Roundup, summing up uh, all the latest happenings. Uh, in Rattlebro's newspaper. Now, uh, if you want more, you got to go to reformer.com or get their smartphone app or pick up uh, some real rainforest uh, off a newsstand around town, get yourself a subscription, anything like that. We just uh, sum it up uh, in two sentences or less for you. If you want the details, uh, you got to go to their site. Speaking of newspapers, we're going to come in Tuesday uh, and have a little sample clip. We'll interview Randy Holhut, Deputy News Editor at The Commons, about their upcoming weekly issue as well. All right, that's enough chit-chat on BCTV's multimedia uh, partnerships across town. Let's uh, jump into our next story, which will include... Let's get rid of... Yeah, there we go. There's a good close-up on me. All right. Uh, the race for governor of Vermont is heating up with the first of the debates between Democratic incumbent Governor Shumlin and Republican challenger Randy Brock taking center stage on VPR Wednesday night. Among the topics was uh, that of FEMA's role in rebuilding a post-Irene Vermont, in particular the state hospital system. Uh, and uh, a federal agency Brock contests the governor should never have relied on. In the event that the amount that we get from FEMA, which does seem to be uh, likely to be significantly lower than what was anticipated originally, 
how well prepared we are to continue and to institute a corrective strategy without harming our economy, without harming our bond rating, and whether or not we have a contingency plan that, that makes sense. This coming just a day before the governor held a press conference in Waterbury to announce uh, aggressive action in taking the VSH, Vermont State Hospital, plan forward. FEMA will continue to work with us. We will continue to beat on them. But I am making the decision to push ahead on the construction of the new hospital at Berlin by breaking ground before snow flies to get us out of the mental health crisis that we're in. Any other approach would be unacceptable. Governor Shumlin, courtesy of his YouTube channel, youtube.com slash VT Governor. Next, uh, on to our newest feature, our VSP report, uh, courtesy of the Vermont State Police and our contact up there, Stephanie Desario, who's been sending us the latest bulletins for that. We'll go back into the newsroom. Let's see if I can use our fancy transitions yet again. There we go. Back into the newsroom. And uh, this time, instead of a little reformer roundup graphic here, uh, we're going to try and jump right into the Vermont State Police stories. And we'll start, there we go, with a human skull. Uh, the Vermont State Police reports uh, say that a human skull that turned up during a state police canine search in February um, have prompted them to now return to the investigation after frozen ground deferred the original follow-up search. In the interim, anthropology experts from the University of Texas have determined that the skull uh, belonged to a 25 to 40-year-old woman of Asian descent. That's the information they could glean from that. And uh, we'll move on in the stories here. Uh, and talk a little bit about marijuana. That's right, uh, today the Vermont State Police announced that two new marijuana dispensaries have been conditionally approved by the Vermont Department of Public Safety for Burlington and Waterbury. That's uh, a little look at our, reform, uh, at our Vermont State Police report, I should say, uh, the latest addition to the 545 Live, we can say it, formulaic roster, adding it to the formula. All right, let's go uh, back into our uh, select board report as we did have a special meeting on Tuesday during that meeting, which was actually uh, concurrent to our last broadcast of 545 Live. We did a little sp split screen in their action. Uh, during that meeting, the Brattleboro Select Board discussed the new $14 million police and fire station project, agreeing to vote the project in at their regularly scheduled meeting next week. And in addition, uh, the board continued their discussion of the role of social media in gathering public input for board meetings. Uh, that added new levels of contentiousness to an already heated debate. Public boards and committees may utilize town social media for gathering public input and fostering public discussion relating to the role with which it has been charged by statute or the select board. I think that violates the open meeting law. I do too. It says you can conduct your business by social media. You can watch the board at its next regularly scheduled meeting live on BCTV Channel 10, just two clicks up the dial at 6.15 p.m. this coming Tuesday, just after a new live edition of this here, 545 Live. Moving on, uh, longtime BCTV volunteer and local artist Deborah Lazar has picked up uh, the prestigious, if not universal, universally recognizable Plain Air Vermont Quick Draw Award. Let's show it to you here. That's her painting uh, in the left corner there. Uh, she's picked up this award for third place for her art, which has been displayed uh, in the last couple of years in downtown Brattleboro and places like Amy's Bakery Arts Cafe. Congratulations, Debbie. Uh, thanks for all you do for BCTV, in particular 545 Live. She's uh, gotten us a number of clips as well. All right, let's move back into the headlines here. The Brattleboro VA has expanded its services with the introduction of the community-based outpatient care program described by medical director Richard Orlin as a primary care center on steroids with new services like video conferencing checkups and more. Earlier this week, we sat down with Orlin to break down the facts, including who should be seeking their care. The new VA, I think, has really recognized its uh, responsibility and uh, cares for and will offer care to anyone who served our country or is affiliated with someone that did as appropriate to their discharge condition. All right, I want to jump into our seven town summary, but first, BUHS TV will be back, uh, and that's going to give me an opportunity to show off a little footage that uh, I got to swipe during a test from them to make sure it was working. This is the uh, Colonel's opening game in Essex. They're going to have footage of that in their home opener on BUHS TV. It's going to be at 10.15 uh, on Monday. Um, so uh, that'll show looks up the dial on our government and education sister channel, Channel 10. Uh, it's going to be weekdays excluding Wednesday when they take a well-deserved day off. All right, 
Uh, as I mentioned, that seven town summary, now of course the B in BCTV stands for Brattleboro, but there's actually seven other surrounding communities uh, that BCTV's got their fingers in the munis municipal happenings of. We're talking about towns in Newfane, Jamaica, Putney, Dummerston, Guilford, Vernon. We'll jump right in now and uh, start with Dummerston, where tension has continued between the board and uh, Vermont Emergency Management over the Vermont Yankee evacuation plan. So when that shelter gets full, it then goes to the next shelter. And it could be in the middle of a school. So that's north, north, allegedly. It could be anywhere. Mm. So that would really cause problems. And that's why we're trying to come to, to fix that issue. And during the Leland and Gray School Board's returning meeting, LNG science teacher Bruce Whitman uh, took a moment to describe summer at the school. If you could have been at the school this summer, you would have been amazed at how many students were engaged. Mm -hmm. From SEEK, to soccer, to performing arts, to the Explorers Camp, which is over at Townsend this year, to Tom Connors, Chinese students. They, this place was just hopping. The board also heard from a group of concerned teachers and parents about protecting the school's ancillary music programs. All those meetings uh, can be found in their entirety at brattlebrotv.org in uh, video on demand format, which includes the uh, delightful feature of being able to skip ahead and jump from uh, agenda item to agenda item. Of course, they also show uh, on BCTV. Those will all be on our government channel. Channel 10, uh, a full schedule also at that brattlebrotv.org website. We've been talking about, all right, before we wrap up, uh, we're going to talk about our Leahy Report, Vermont's tenured uh, U.S. Senator uh, is hot on the trail of the Citizens United decision, which uh, allots the same uh, uh, abilities as individuals to large corporations. Uh, he's got his own feelings on that. Let's take a look. I think few Supreme Court decisions in American history have been so corrosive for our political process. Corporations are not individuals in that regard. Otherwise, having elected General Eisenhower as president, we, maybe we would be electing General Motors as president. It makes that much sense. It makes that much sense, so says Senator Patrick Leahy. All right, a few notes before we wrap. Uh, I'm going to personally, personally invite you to BCTV's annual meeting. That's right. Uh, you can see we've got uh, the invite here. Let's hide my face while uh, I'm talking. So we're going to overdub some more great, more smart sounding sounds. All right, uh, it's going to be... Wednesday, October 3rd, from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Brittleboro Museum and Art Center. Their address, 10 Vernon Street. And boy, are we pulling out all the stops. We're going to engage uh, the uh, political talk show host, David Peckman, as our speaker, uh, our guest speaker. I'm also going to whip out a series of uh, montage clips looking back at all the BCTV footage from the year. We're going to be handing out awards. It'll be an exciting time, uh, complete with plenty of food and beverages. All right, that's full it, everybody. Thanks for checking in with us, but uh, be sure to tune back in Tuesday right here on Channel 8 at 5.45 p.m. for another live broadcast. We'll get you plenty of footage from that flotilla, Our River Runs Through It protest that's happening tomorrow, uh, where folks are going to make the trek uh, down the Connecticut River in kayaks, canoes, and boats to Vermont Yankees waterfront property to dump ice in the river, symbolically cooling it after the discharge from the plant has heated it to unnatural levels. All right, thanks to everybody that made Makes 545 Live tick the way it does, including our content specialist, Deborah Lazar. Congrats on your win on that painting. To all of you out there who watch 545 Live, making uh, it worth producing. To Rich Melanson, who gleans that footage uh, out of the towns in the uh, Seven Town Summary region outside BCTV for that Seven Town Summary that we do. Uh, he's the one behind all that footage. Uh, and everybody else that makes 545 Live tick the way it does, like our new staff writer, Justin Harris, all of you out there are fantastic. I'm talking way too much, so I'll just say, for BCTV and 545 Live, I'm Roland Boyden. Night, everybody.